Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Flight Images, and in this video I'm going to look at the problem of colour tints with black and white photo prints. Uh, by the problem of colour tints, I mean unwanted colour tints. If you want to tone and tint your images, fine. However, most of the time I want them bang on neutral. What do I mean bang on neutral? I mean that if I look at the picture and say it's black and white, I don't want someone to look at it and go, mm, yeah, but it's got a sort of colour tint to it which is what has happened for many years with black and white prints. Now, I've got a lot of stuff on the North Light Images website and I will put links to the more technical stuff at the end of the video with the notes and during it for any particularly important aspects because this is can be, if you want to be, quite a technical approach and it's not really suited to discussing in a video. So I need to be able to write stuff down, fine tune it and do whatever. This is one of the areas where you really do need to check the written articles as well, if you want to go into it in any detail. But I'm just going to go over the principles of what causes it and some of the potential fixes for it. I noticed this the other day when I was doing a review of some new papers. Now I'd looked at some art papers from Permajet, um, their heritage range, and I looked at this particular one here, which is a Baraita paper. Now the coatings, and I find this out when I'm quite often when I'm doing the profiling, because I make colour profiles uh, for new papers, for colour prints. Um, I find this out and I think that for some reason this particular coating is showing just a little bit more colour under some lighting. What do I mean under some lighting? Well it's a picture here, there's a photograph taken of one of these test prints and I'll come back to these test prints in a moment, uh, how you can use them and what they're for. But this is a photograph taken on this using just the normal warm LED lighting of the office. Not the lighting that I've got here at the moment for the video, uh, this is just using the normal lighting. Now I've taken a photo, I've processed the raw image, but I've also included in it a grayscale reference, a reference card. Now I've got several different types of these, but this is this is one from an x right this is a color checker, this is the video one, this is, um, this is the one for uh, photography use. But essentially it's a neutral gray. I gray, I white balance the picture that I've taken on that and then the color tint shows up. Now remember that cameras don't see colors quite the same way that we do, so the colors may not be perfectly accurate here. If you can't see the colour when you do this, then that's a good sign. It suggests there isn't any. What you can do is increase the saturation of the picture there and it will be quite obvious. So that's the under the warm LED lighting. And to me, and uh, I have to say that I'm, I'm hoping that these colours, some of these show through on the video, but I can't guarantee it. They're quite subtle. Um, if they were really obvious, then we'd have something wrong with the printer set up. But anyway, here's the picture. Here's the test image. And here it is, white balanced on the grey scale here. And there is a distinct brownish, magenta-ish perhaps tinge to the tones here. Now, that I expect. Uh, for dye inks, uh, getting good black and white is much trickier and may need you may need to use a profile based approach rather than the black and white print mode. Now I'm specifically here looking at the black and white print mode. I'll discuss it here for this the P5000, so this is the ABW mode, so that's relevant to the P700, lots of P900, lots of other Epson printers. I've also got an example showing the Canon equivalent of that, which I'll come to in a bit. So uh, although I'm using particular papers here on an Epson pigment ink printer, this is quite generally applicable. So I'd hope it'd be useful for uh, you know, whatever printers you're using, assuming the printers are at least half decent printers with black and white print modes. If you're using a very basic program, uh, printer, then yes, black and white can occasionally be got to work well, but um, it can take quite a bit of work. But anyway, there's the picture with the warm LED. What about the lighting I've got here, which has got 4000K lights up here. Uh, I've got a, four, a light set to 4000K, larger light over here. So what about that? Well, it looks better. Now, 
you could say, ah, oh, well, if I get the right lighting, I'll have the pictures look right. Well, that's that's great if I know the lighting, the pictures are going to be looked at under, but they're not. If I were to take these pictures outdoors or take them somewhere fluorescent or tungsten lighting, then the tint would vary somewhat. And this is always a problem with getting good black and white. Now, it does vary on the paper. It's not necessarily the under, what's underneath in the paper. It's the coatings. Uh, and how the ink interacts with the surface. It turns out that with the coatings used on this particular variety, it's very good, but it gives a little tint to the reddish, a shift to the reddish, which shows through in black and whites under some lighting. And you can see it's far less obvious in this lighting here, 4000K, and the monitor is also set to 4000K, so I'm hoping it's fairly well balanced with what you can see. But if I go to the warm LED, the normal lighting, household lighting, there's a distinct tint to it. Um, if I tried other lighting, it would show through as well. So having seen what the issue can be, how do you address it? Well, I've got this specific test image that I created a few years ago. Now, there are lots of different versions of it for different uses. The version I've got here is the one I covered recently looking at black and white linearization and you know, black and white testing. And in this, this pattern at the top here is read in in the spectrophotometer, scanning spectrophotometer, the ISIS that I've got here. It's read in through that and it's an automated process, it takes very little effort. This is an older version that uses, this is for another type of spectrophotometer. There are versions of this for data colour equipment. Uh, there's a version of it you can use even on a scanner. Although I would say that if you're going to use it on um, a desktop scanner, on a, a photo scanner, then you've got to accept that your accuracy is reduced considerably. It can help. So I've got a look at using a scanner based approach in that. So there are all different versions of this test image available, which you can download for free. And I'll put the links in the notes. This is the image. There's the grayscale ramp that I'm going to test. Now, I want to measure the details of that there. And that will tell me how it should be from no ink, paper white through to maximum black. So it should be a nice linear scale. It's rarely a very linear scale, but you know, printers have got better over the years. And this image here, the whole image is designed for testing aspects of black and white print use. Um, I've got a video that looks at using this. Loads of articles in it connected to it. If you go for the download for it, I say free for non-commercial use and it's been around for years and it's pretty much a standard for testing black and white. So I've got that image there, which I can read. Now, once I've read it, I run it through some software and I'm not going to go into the details of this. I use a uh, quad, quad tone rip, a bit of shareware, which generates these text-based curves. I'm not interested in the precise numbers here. And uh, so once again, this is stuff that's discussed in the detail in the, in the articles. I'm interested in the shapes of the curve. The line, the diagonal line, the L line, that gives the overall linearity of the print. Now that tells me that shadows aren't being scrunched up, midtones aren't too bright. It, it's the overall tonal balance. And in this particular one, which is this paper here, uh, the, the Baraita. I've got a lovely straight line of L's there. Now that's good. That's perfectly good. Just because it's not an absolute straight line, don't think you have to start tweaking things and adjust You don't. That is a good response for it. It's, you know, what I look for if I'm doing black and white printing. What is less welcome is the line of A's. Now there's a line of L's, A's and B's. Why L-A-B? Well, L-A-B is a color space um, that is used for uh, aspects of color management. Some people use it for editing, but that is a, another subject altogether. Um, it is a way of looking. L can think of it as brightness. A and B are two different um, adjustments of color. So the A goes from green to red, whereas the B goes from blue to yellow. Um, they're, they're based on how we perceive color. Uh, so you can't get a bluey yellow and you can't get a reddy green. So there are two, two axes like that that adjust for color. Now, I'll come back to that in a moment, but the line of A's here shoots off to one side. 
Now that suggests because the A's are going positive, positive A is a tint to the red. And that suggests that there's going to be a slight reddish tinge somewhere in these. And it is exactly what I see. That's the picture printed with no adjustment. I can then make adjustments in the ABW driver or the Canon driver if I was doing this on a Canon a pigment ink printer. Um, I can make adjustments and do further test prints and I can get further graphs like this. How do I make the adjustments? Well, this is the Epson version, the ABW driver. I've got it set at defaults. So the default tone is dark. It's not normal. It's not, and it, I just leave it at what it comes at. Uh, turns out that's best. For some reason, the default is not, was not the one you would imagine if you looked at the drop down list. Feel free to experiment. I have done and I still leave it at this. The key is this disc of color. Now it has letters around it, R, M, red, magenta, blue, C, cyan, G, green, Y, yellow. It's, so it has primary, secondary colors around it. If you look at it, it has sort of colored tint. You move the center point of this to add a tint. Now, the tint you add needs to cancel out the tint that you've identified. You can do this visually if need be, just from that, those photographs I took earlier. Once you've white balanced it, you actually just look and measure in Photoshop something like that. What is that color? Uh, what's it? What's the tint? Um, you can change your print, your image in Photoshop, change it to LAB mode uh, rather than RGB. If you have it in LAB, then you can use the eyedropper and you can directly see what the tint is in terms of A and B, or you can get it from the curves. So I get it from the curve information here. I'm looking at this sort of bulge of the A line there. So I know I want to make an adjustment. The problem is that this display doesn't directly, it mentions colors, primary color. It doesn't mention LAB. Now, my suspicion, and I've asked at Epson and nobody at Epson UK knows this. This is some of the secrets that are held at Epson in Japan. Uh, likewise for Canon, um, there are aspects of how drivers work and things like that that are held tightly at the headquarters and not told to the mere minions who do the work out at the, at the, uh, the various country offices. So by looking at this, my suspicion is that I want to at make an adjustment to add a reddish tinge in the LAB space. So I want uh, that's, I, sorry, I want to add a greenish tinge to correct the red. So I want a, a tilt there. So I've gone, I've set this initially in this example here, it shows to minus five. Now, there is no information whatsoever as to what these numbers actually mean. Um, nobody knows what they mean. Well, somebody knows somewhere, whoever wrote this and, and did the software here. But my suspicion is this is a horizontal adjustment and it shifts over that way. And I've done a few tests here and I've got one, the best looking print, and it's the one I use for some of these large prints, is an adjustment of eight units. So we've got a horizontal minus eight here, which is put in to offset that curve that I spotted with the line of A's drifting across. So uh, that seems to work. Seems a little haphazard and I'm afraid it is. This is one of those things that if you get a paper you generally like and you test it and find that the black and white performance is just a little bit off. And I would say here, this is one of the areas where I get Karen to help me because her color vision um, is much more uh, accurate than mine. And she can spot color tints in these when to me, they all just look pretty much black and white. Um, why does that matter? Well, it's fine me saying, yeah, that looks great. That's fine. That's black and white. That's fine. If I sell a print like this and it goes in somebody's house who's got better color vision and there are a proportion of people, uh, almost invariably women, who can see color tints like this, if they then go, well, that picture's got color to it. I don't like it. It doesn't matter whether I can't see it or not. Uh, in this instance, it's the customer is right. So if you've got somebody you know with good color vision, enlist their assistance for having a look at these pictures and see what they know, because it's quite possible that you think it's fine and it isn't. So anyway, that's the Epson version of it. What about the Canon version? So the Epson version, I've made a horizontal adjustment. 
Well, the Canon version of this has a square patch of colour rather than a circular one, has no letters around the edge of it, but it has a familiarity to it. And what I realised after looking at the two of them together is that the Canon one is rotated 90 degrees, or the Epson one is rotated 90 degrees, depending on which you see first. Um, that means that the horizontal adjustment I've made here uh, for the, on the uh, Epson on the Canon printer to fix the same issue would be a vertical movement of the center point there. Now, one of the reasons I suspected this is that I used to have a Canon IPF 8300 large format printer here, and the black and white that on that had permanently in my setup of almost every paper an adjustment dialed into it to compensate for a slight tint in the inks. And in fact, uh, a few years ago, I would say that the balance of neutrality for pigment inks, Epson inks did better than the Canon inks a few years ago. Now, I've not tested a new large format printer from Canon for a while, so I can't say that's necessarily so. And I'm looking at a printer here, which is a few years old as well. So uh, the two of them are pretty much evenly matched in performance uh, for aspects like that. Um, I'm looking at getting, say, neutral black and white. So for the Epson printer, I would add a horizontal minus five adjustment. So movement towards the green, whereas for a Canon printer, it looks like that's a vertical movement on the display. So that's that's the difference. This is taken off the for the Canon Pro 300, by the way, uh, which I've noticed you get similar issues on some papers. It really does just depend on which paper you're using. So that's yeah. How did I, yeah, what were the results of when I did all of this? I mean, I, I've got these picture, these prints here and I've got the scanner here so I can just read them quite quickly and do the test. And I've got this huge, great collection of graphs here. And uh, the point of it is that eventually I settled on the adjustment of minus eight. That didn't influence the linearity of the uh, print because sometimes if you make a strong color adjustment it will throw out the linearity on some papers on some printers didn't change too much and gave me generally good looking results um, is that a problem with the p5000 no it is a it's not a problem it is a feature of some papers now, I haven't tried this particular paper on the Pro 300 or uh, any ca other Canon uh, pigment-based printers, so I don't know how it performs there. But it does seem, and it, it, it is something that varies by, um, you know, by paper and paper type and coating. So it could happen to almost any paper. So it's worth checking if you want to get good black and white. Always look at your prints under different lighting conditions. Um, uh, these particular prints I've done here, um, I've reprinted the whole test image um, because it's got the measurement target on it. You could just print a small block of mid gray and see how that comes out. So that, you know, save paper and ink by doing it that. But anyway, what it means is that these prints here on the Barita paper, uh, these ones under the lighting that I can see here, maybe slightly different on the video. These are pretty close to neutral. Um, the print at the back there was done uncorrected on the matte paper, on the art papers, and that one has a bit more of a tint to it than these two. So that's how you do the adjustment on that. Um, what about other papers? There's a curve with P5000 using uh, Red River Paladuro paper. There is still a bump of the A here. So there is a slight bit of tint coming through on that, less than this paper. I printed some black and white images on this and I didn't notice a problem. Um, just because these lines give you a hint that there may be a problem with something doesn't necessarily mean there is. So you know, get have a look at the pictures under different lighting, have a look and see what you think. Uh, but you can play around with these, the tint adjustments using in the, in the black and white mode. Now, you might think, well, why bother with this? Why not just use a good quality profile to print black and white? Unfortunately, without quite a bit of optimization, 
black and white printed using profiles on pigment ink printers doesn't do as well as the general, the ABW or the black and white mode in Canon's pigment drivers doesn't do as well as that. So with a very few exceptions I've come across, I will tend to use the black and white print mode for black and white images. So if you want to tone them, tint them, then by all means use a profile and then use that. I would note though with toning and tinting, almost always you can overdo it. Be prepared to sort of add it in and then dial it back. When you think on your screen that the tinting that you've added or toning that you've added to an image to print it is n just not enough, do a print and have a look at it because it's often much more visible in prints. Um, and I'm not a big fan of toning and tinting anyway, but to overdo it with digital prints, um, yeah, it looks like, can look like you've spilt a cup of coffee over the print or something else has gone seriously wrong in your print process. And that's where that comes in. So uh, that, that is um, the Red River Paladuro. Yes, it still shows that slight drift of the line of the A's there. Um, I said I'd come back to dye-based inks. There's a curve from a Pro 200 using actually on the uh, Palo Duro paper from Red River. Now with this, the line of A's is fairly, fairly constant, but the line of B's veers off to one side. Um, I'm afraid that's because they're dye-based inks. The darker colors of dye-based inks, the, uh, so black ink, Black ink, you'd think, doesn't reflect any ink, any light. It absorbs light. Well, it absorbs light across most of the spectrum, but not so much in the red. And that means that if I take a black image that's printed uh, with dye-based inks and have white light coming on it, most of the light, the spectrum, is absorbed. Less is absorbed in the red. That red is reflected and that gives a slight reddish tinge. So with dye-based inks, you're up against actual properties of the inks themselves. The inks on the pigments are usually pretty neutral, certainly the way they're mixed together. But with dye-based inks, you've got a bit more of a problem. Now, if you're looking at getting good black and white on any particular printer, have a look at the written review that I've done for each printer. Almost every printer has a specialist section covering black and white printing. I say look at the written versions of it because there is stuff like this in I put in it and I shall go into a few more details of how to get the best results and stuff for any particular printer. So if you want good black and white, look at that. I will have covered it specifically for printers, but in general, yes, you get coloured tints. Yes, you can fix it if you're careful. Um, so hope this has been useful, bit technical perhaps, um, even more so if you have a look at the articles. Please feel free to ask questions because I know this is an area that a lot of people have dabbled with and have not really got to grips with. And um, say, email me at Northlight or say, ask a question on YouTube and um, thank you for that. Um, oh, I should mention, please do subscribe to the channel, is appreciated. And um, Thanks for watching.